Dear viewer, it is a pleasure to welcome you again today. We look forward to hearing Pastor Elaine Corrali speak to us. Before then, kindly join me in welcoming Mrs. Caroline Corrali with insights on family life. Good evening. Today we are going to talk about a very specific commandment, the fifth one. Honor your father and your mother. God is pleased to see that our family relationships are healthy and strong. And yet, divorces continue to occur. Abuse still occurs. Parents face great challenges with their children. Tonight, I would like to talk to you about that fifth commandment. It says in Exodus 20 verse 12, Honor thy father and thy mother, that thou mayest live long in the land. This text is part of the Ten Commandments. Like all the other commandments, this commandment to honor our parents has no time limit or age limit. It concerns young and children, adults and the elderly. There is no time in life when one is exempt from honoring one's parents. What does it mean to honor one's father and mother? How do we do that? One honors one's father and mother by respecting them in words, in deeds, with an internal attitude of esteem for the position they occupy. The Hebrew word used to describe the verb to honor includes the meaning of reverence, appreciation, and valuing. There are three reasons why God gave us this commandment. Number one, there is no perfect parent. We all have weaknesses and defects. God alone is the perfect parent. Even though our parents may not seem worthy of honor, God tells us to respect their position as parents. Number two, respect for authority begins at home. Respect for authority begins at home and helps determine the kind of success we will have in school, in our careers and in our relationships throughout our lives. Number three, how I relate to my parents will affect every other relationship. Much of our behavior as adult and how we behave with others is shaped by how we behave with our parents. Often, our behavior as adults is really a reaction to our childhood experiences with our parents. Studies have shown that people who get along with their parents have far less stress in their lives. This commandment to honor our parents applies to us in different ways as different stages of our lives. Let us look at how I should honor my parents as a child, as a youth, and as an adult. Point number one, as a child, I honor my parents by obeying and respecting them. The Apostle Paul reiterated the same divine call in Ephesians 6 verse 1 when he wrote, Children, obey your parents according to the Lord, for this is right. Point number two, as a young person, I honor my parents by accepting and appreciating them. Proverbs 23 verse 22 states, Listen to thy father who begat thee, and despise not thy mother when she is old. Point number three, as an adult, I honor my parents by accepting them, not abandoning them. How does 1 Timothy 5 verse 8 describe someone who does not care for his own family? If a person does not care for his own, especially those in his family, he has denied the faith and he is worse than an infidel. Augustine stressed the importance of the fifth commandment by asking a rhetorical question. He asked, 
If someone doesn't respect his or her parents, is there anyone he or she could spare? Probably not. Because the relationship between parent and child is the first and primary relationship, the beginning of all human society. Under ordinary circumstances, the first people a child knows are his parents. God wants family to be our first hospital, our first school, our first government, our first church. If we do not respect authority at home, we will not respect it anywhere else. Respect, appreciation, reverence really starts at home. Thank you for listening. I hope to see you again tomorrow evening. Goodbye. Thank you very much, Mrs. Corali, for such valuable insights. Who will believe? Paranormal phenomena and spiritism meet with great success in modern society. The Christian must renounce all ties to the world of darkness. Remember, we are more than conquerors. Please join me in welcoming Pastor Elaine Corali as he delves into lessons concerning spiritualism. Dear friends, what a joy, what a pleasure to be with you once again. I hope that by God's grace that you have benefited from all our studies and that you are drawing closer and closer to Jesus. Tonight, before we continue in our study, I want you to bow your head as we pray together. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for your goodness and your kindness and we pray that your spirit will be with us in a special way as we open your word for we have prayed in Jesus name Amen Every year on October 31st millions of people celebrate Halloween mainly in the United States and in Europe by dressing up as witches devils or demons. This day has become an opportunity for children to dress up and go from house to house either to ask for candy or to cast a spell. This practice, which is so common and seems so harmless and even amusing, shows how many are getting used to and trivializing the world of the occult. More and more, curious people today are interested in paranormal and supernatural experiences. There has been a resurgence of interest in the occult in recent years. Cinema, television, video games and many publications present spiritualism in an attractive light. The tribalization of witchcraft and magic has resulted in familiarizing the world with the occult and making it feel that this field is harmless and even attractive. Paranormal phenomena meet with great success in modern society. Take the case of France as an example. Every year, between 10 and 12 million people consult a medium, a healer or a professional of the paranormal. 
a number that explodes with the development of internet sites and telephone medium platforms. Every year, in France, 3.2 billion euros is spent on astrologers and other spiritualists, according to an article published in Le Monde. This situation is not only French, it is all over the world. The key figure in all forms of occultism is the intermediary, the person who supposedly has a gift, a paranormal capacity. It is he who serves as a bridge between the visible world and the invisible world. And there are many intermediaries, clairvoyants, uh, astrologers, mediums, soothsayers, witch doctors, you name them. The question we must ask ourselves is this. When someone dies, does he return in the form of a spirit to visit those who are still alive? Can the spirits of the dead return and converse with the living? Can the spirits of the dead take possession of the living and use their body, their voice, their spirit to act and speak? What we are talking about tonight is one of the most serious subjects that we may be called upon to meet. So serious that we could rightly call it a matter of life and death. Our eternal salvation is at stake and so we must be sure of what the Bible has to say about uh, those phenomena. At this point, it is important to let the Bible speak. The Bible expresses it very clearly in Ecclesiastes 9 verse 5. It says, For the living know that they will die, but the dead know nothing. What do the dead know? The Bible says they know nothing. And Job expresses it clearly in Job 7 verses 9 and 10. The Bible says, as a cloud vanishes and is gone, so one who does go down to the grave does not return. He will never come to his house again. His place will know him no more. Is there therefore any possible way for the dead to communicate with the living? The Bible says no. So where is the belief that the dead continue to live after death and can be in contact with the living. It comes straight from Satan himself. In the Garden of Eden, he seduced Eve. He held a real seance with Eve, using a serpent as a medium and speaking through its mouth. He is the grand master of deception. And Eve believed the lie of Satan who said to her, you shall not die. And that lie was in total contradiction to God's truth. For God had said in Genesis 2 verse 17, you will surely die. So this is where the problem is. Who will we believe? For Jesus' teachings, we know for certain that the living cannot communicate with the dead. So why can't they? Because the dead know nothing. And hence the question, if the dead are not conscious, then who are those spirits that communicate with the living? The answer is clear. When the dead are questioned, it is demons who answer us. Notice God's warning to his people in Leviticus 19, verse 31, Bible says, Do not turn to mediums or seek out spirits, for you will be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 18, verses 10 to 12, God declares, Let no one be found among you who sacrifices their son or daughter in the fire who practices divination or sorcery 
interprets omens and gauges in witchcraft or casts spells or who is a medium or spiritist or who consults the dead. Anyone who does these things is detestable to the Lord. If God forbids all these activities, it is first of all because he is not the source of those activities. Thus, practicing spiritism is therefore equivalent to talking to demons. But someone might say, but I have talked to my late wife and she spoke to me. I recognized her voice. It was her. No wonder, for the Bible says that Satan himself can disguise himself as an angel of light. Demons have existed since the dawn of time. They are therefore present in the daily life of humans. They know our lives, so they have no problem imitating a voice, bringing out the preferred expressions of the deceased or revealing certain details about the person. In this game, humans always lose. The tragic consequences of getting involved in spiritism, we find it in the case of King Saul, the first king of Israel. This was a king who persisted in his refusal to listen to the voice of God throughout his reign. Saul was very reluctant to follow God and the Bible says in 1 Chronicles chapter 10 verse 13, Saul died because he was guilty of unfaithfulness to the Lord and because he questioned and consulted with those who spoke to the dead. The dead know nothing, the Bible says, and yet millions are deceived. Why? Because they trust their feelings, they trust their senses, they trust their experiences more than the word of God. And this is the problem. Will we accept the divine truth or will we believe in Satan's lies? Only those who have strengthened their minds with the words of the Bible will be able to withstand the flood of deceit that is already beginning to sweep over the world. We need to know th these things that the Bible says, to believe with a resolute mind and not let experience, feelings or an appearance distract us from the truth. To say, Seeing is believing. I believe when I see it with my own eyes is the surest way to be deceived. We can make a far-reaching decision if we base our life, if we base our decisions on our senses, our feelings and experiences rather than the Word of God, the Bible. Dear friends, I want to point out that paranormal or occult practices can have serious spiritual consequences. Whenever we put our trust in a psychic or a fortune teller or medium, we open the door to the occult world, a world that one does not know and does not master. Therefore, the spirits and demons behind it have a right of access via the psychic or the healer or the medium or the witch doctor. And if a person keep on in those practices, he will have some serious spiritual effects. We see that in a person who practices or has practiced or sought the services of mediums, astrologers or healers, the following disorders can be noted. An addiction to the healer, fortune teller or witch doctor. Some people spend all their fortunes on those people. An aversion or a hardening towards God, the Bible and in particular towards the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Those people who practice those things also have some personality disorders or 
have the appearance of some diseases. Nightmares, anxiety attacks, depression, oppression, irresistible compulsions, sexual perversions, violence, suicidal thoughts. All those things happen to people who are involved in those practices. Of course, these disorders can have medical or psychiatric causes. It is important to be cautious and to discern what is a proven occult problem. If the case does not fall under one of these practices, it is good to refer the person to a doctor, a psychiatrist or a psychologist. But other possible consequences are demonic. In cases where occult or magic practices have been transmitted over several generations, one goes from difficulties to tragedies and disasters. In most situations, the reality of demonic attacks can be linked to more or less regular contact with occult and witchcraft practices. Dear friends, we are talking about a very important subject here. Have you dabbled in this thing? Has it been brought in an aspect of your life? And you feel like today yeah, that there is a curse upon your whole environment, your whole life and home and existence. Some of you might be sitting here tonight and you realize I have gone into these things. They are an abomination in the eyes of God and I am bound by them, but I don't know how to get out. There is an answer. Praise God, there is an answer and Christ is that answer. You might be struggling in that area right now, but you need to remember that in Christ you are more than conquerors. By his death on the cross, Jesus triumphed over the forces of evil. And the blood of Christ that he shed for you to defeat sin, death and Satan at Calvary can deliver you tonight, I promise you. Oh, my dear friend, he is able to deliver you. What must you do? You must come to Jesus. Hebrews 2 verse 14 states that so that by his death he might break the power of him who holds the power of death, that is, the devil. Yes, at the cross, the devil was smashed and the powers of darkness were defeated. Colossians 2 verse 15 declares, and having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. Dear friends, he who subdued the demonic spirits during his earthly ministry, broke their power and made their definitive ruin certain. This is the good news. The victory of Jesus makes us victorious over the forces of evil that always try to dominate us. In Christ, we can walk in peace. In Christ, we can walk with joy. In Christ, we can walk with the assurance of his love. This is the good news. Ephesians 5 verse 8 declares, for you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light. Whatever your difficulties, there is very good news for you. You are not helpless. You are not the victim of a battle between two heavenly superpowers of almost equal strength. No. God is almighty. God is omnipresent. God is all-knowing. And Satan was defeated by Christ on the cross. So don't believe the devil's lie. That suggests that your situation would be hopeless against his attacks. No. He knows that in Christ you have authority on him. But he seeks to keep you in ignorance of this fact. He is a liar. And it is only to the extent that you believe in his lies that he can have a hold of you. But remember, he is a defeated enemy. And if 
We are in Christ. We are more than conquerors over the enemy. We can be freed from the burden of our past actions. If we have Christ as our Savior, we no longer live in darkness. We no longer live in fear of evil powers. We no longer live in ignorance and vanity of our old way of life. Nevertheless, your freedom will be the result of what you do, what you choose to believe, what you will confess, what you will renounce and choose to forsake. No one can do it for you. The 19th chapter in the book of Acts tells us an experience of believers in Ephesus who made a formal decision to renounce any practice contrary to God's word. We read verse 17. This became known both to all Jews and Greeks dwelling in Ephesus and fear fell on them all. And the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. Verse 18. And many who had believed came confessing and telling their deeds. And many of those who had practiced magic brought their books together and burned them in the sight of all. And they counted up the value of them and it totaled 50,000 pieces of silver. Friends, when the Ephesians accepted the gospel, they turned away from all their evil practices. Therefore, the first step to freedom in Christ is to renounce any past or present involvement in occult practices, false teachings and rituals. We have to renounce any activity or participation in a group that denies Jesus Christ or whose source is other than the absolute authority of the Bible. That's what renunciation is. Taking it all and burning it. And do you know what will happen? If you burn your bridges for Christ, you will prevail. You will be more than a conqueror. But if you don't, you will be hindered in your walk with God. It will be impossible for you to have that peace that comes from God and you will be constantly subjected to the forces of the evil one. And that's why it is so important for you to take that decision for Christ. Dear friends, Jesus is stronger than the enemy. And tonight, I invite you to join his army and to march under his banner. Ephesians 6 Verses 10 and 11 declare, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Fortunately, in this spiritual warfare, we are not unprotected. We have a Savior who specializes in delivering anyone from the power of the enemy. Is there someone here tonight who needs to be free? You need to come to Christ. It's as simple as that. Dear friends, you are invited to be more than a conqueror with Christ. What an immense joy it is to be in the service of the one and only God who revealed himself through Jesus Christ, his only begotten son. And Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, has accomplished everything for us. Glory be to God. Glory be to Jesus Christ. Christ who loves us. Jesus Christ, the one who is the resurrection and life, all bearing all our sins on the cross, atoned for our sins and died for us on that cross. This is the kind of Savior we serve. He came out from that grave. He is more than a conqueror. And if we trust in him, if we believe in him, if we surrender our lives to him, I tell you, my friend, we will be more than a conqueror. The Bible says that Jesus is Lord. And we read in Philippians 2 verse 9 to 11, therefore God also has highly exalted him and given him the name 
which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of those in heaven, of those on earth, and of those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Dear friends, how can we be victorious in Christ? It is to simply believe that he has conquered and it is to believe that the blood shed on the cross gives us victory. This is how we conquer. It is in the victory of the crucified Christ that we conquer. The one who intercedes for us. It is through him that we are more than conquerors. Thanks be to God, the Bible says, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Imagine that a strong man, feared by all, and who spreads terror throughout the city, comes to your house regularly, loot you and steals everything that you have. You live in the fear of this man. Every time you see him coming, you tremble. But one day, you meet a man much more powerful than this wicked, strong man. And he becomes your friend and says to you, Listen, from now on, you have nothing to fear, for I am coming to live with you. And I am more than a conqueror. I'll be more than victorious over your enemy. The strong man comes the next day, knocking at your door, and finds you there with a confidence that he has never seen before. Usually fearful, he sees you calm and serene. Suddenly he understands when he sees your friend, who is much stronger than he is, and he is standing behind you. And so your enemy puts his head down and runs away because he knows that he is no match, that the fight is lost in advance. Now fear has left your heart, for you know that you are not alone, you are not left to your weaknesses, but there is someone much stronger who lives in your house and who protects you. And this is exactly what happened on the day when you believed in Christ. Jesus came to dwell in you. He became your Savior, the Almighty God, the conqueror of death before whom every knee bent and every tongue confessed that he is Lord. He whose voice calms the storm, he who is the resurrection and the life, he who is the supreme authority, he who has no age, no beginning, no end, the Lord of lords and the King of kings, he is the one who dwells in you. Before him, your enemy has to bow down. Before him, the enemy has to run away. There might be someone here tonight who needs help. And the only help you can find is in Jesus. And maybe it would be a good time for you to find an Adventist friend or find an Adventist church where you can be accompanied so that you can walk in victory. If you want to be saved, or if you have been a backslider, uh, dabbling in all this stuff, find a place of refuge. That place of refuge is in Christ. And find friends that will surround you, that will support you, that will help you to walk with Christ. Dear friends, tonight, I invite you to be more than conquerors over the works of darkness. If you have been dabbling in the occult, I will invite you to renounce to it tonight. Tonight, maybe you have been struggling for years just to get off of this wrong bandwagon. I tell you, my friend, put your faith in Christ. Some of you might feel that you are so guilty so helpless, so weak. But I'll tell you one thing, you have a strong Savior. 
a strong Lord and he can deliver you tonight. I want to pray specially tonight for those who want to get rid of those shackles, to be free from those chains. And I tell you, the only way you can do this is by confessing your sin, renouncing them, turning to Christ, opening your heart to Him, and letting Him take control. The enemy cannot resist the power of Jesus. And if you want to walk with Christ, if you want to be like those Ephesians who burn away the bridge to the occult world and walk with Christ faithfully, I'll invite you to pray a special prayer with me tonight. I will invite you to repeat after me the words that I will be praying to God. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I come before you and renounce all sinful and occult practices. I renounce all sins of divination, including palm reading, fortune telling, horoscopes, astrology, and other practices. I renounce all use of occult power, casting spells or witchcraft. I renounce heavy metal music, satanic rock, and all demonic role-play games. I renounce all secret oaths to pagan gods as part of initiation ceremony into organizations, fraternities, or other organizations. I repent of ever taking part in any of these practices. I ask you, Father, to forgive and restore me. I accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I accept the Bible as divine truth and accept to follow its teachings. I ask you for the blood of Christ that cleanses me and delivers me and restores me. I ask you to bless me in a special way. Thank you, Lord, for your deliverance. Thank you for the healing that is found in Jesus' name. I thank you tonight that I have crossed the line to go into your camp. I will walk under the banner of Jesus Christ. I will follow him. He will be my Lord and Savior. And for that, I thank you. In his name, I've prayed. Amen. My friend, if you have made that decision tonight, you can rejoice for God is with you. You are accepted by God. You are his child and you have been adopted into God's family. You are free from condemnation. And to continue your walk with God, I'll invite you to find an Adventist friend, an Adventist church, so that you can grow in Christ. May God bless you abundantly as you continue to trust in Christ. Amen. Tamani jua litue, eh, shida zetu zinapo tusonga Jua litue, tupate pumzika, shida zetu za tungoja kesho ye yeah.
nyingi tumetamani jua litue eh, shida zetu zinapotusonga jua litue tupate pumzika shida zetu za tungoja kesho ye mbona wataka jua litue na shida za kobado za kusonga amuru jua na mwezi kusimama hadi Mungu atakapokushindia mbona wataka jua litue na shida za kobado za kusonga amuru jua na mwezi kusimama hadi Mungu atakapokushindia Ni wango cha Mungu akatende ndipo ufahamu tuvitani unazo nguvu ondoa msongo inua mkono mwite mumba miujiza gani wango cha Mungu akatende ndipo ufahamu tuvitani unazo nguvu ondoa msongo inua mkono mwite mumba mbona watakajua litue na shida za kobado za kusonga amuru jua na mwezi kusimama hadi Mungu atakapokushindia mbona watakajua litue na shida za kobado za kusonga amuru jua na mwezi kusimama hadi Mungu atakapokushindia acha kufundi kama choka mamuni acha kuyafumba macho kwa ulevi shida za kozi na pokushinda simama simama mbona watakajua litue na shida za kobado za kusonga amuru jua na mwezi kusimama hadi Mungu atakapokushindia mbona watakajua litue na shida za kobado za kusonga amuru jua na mwezi kusimama hadi Mungu atakapokushindia mbona watakajua litue na shida za kobado za kusonga amuru jua na mwezi kusimama hadi Mungu atakapokushindia mbona watakajua litue na shida za kobado za kusonga amuru jua na mwezi kusimama hadi Mungu atakapokushindia mbona watakajua litue na shida za kobado za kusonga amuru jua na mwezi kusimama hadi Mungu atakapokushindia mbona watakajua litue na shida za kobado za kusonga amuru jua na mwezi kusimama hadi Mungu atakapokushindia tumeokolewa kwa neema tutaketije pamoja na Mungu aliye mto wa mwana wake wa pekee wapenzi ni na wasihi tupendane ikiwa tu watoto wa Mungu mbona chuki kati ya waumini wapi upendo upendo ule wa kwanza kwa nini sasa tuwe na utengano ikiwa tumeokolewa kwa neema Tutaketije pamoja na Mungu aliye mto wa mwana wake wa pekee wapenzi ni na wasihi tupendane ikiwa tu watoto wa Mungu upendo huvumilia haujivuni 
haukose kuwa na adabu hautafuti mambo yake kabwe udhalimu ikiwa tuna upendo tuwake Mungu wapenzi tutafute upendo upendo uvumilia haujivuni haukose kuwa na adabu hautafuti mambo yake kabwe Watu na upendo tu wake Mungu wapenzi tutafute upendo E Mungu wewe ni nguvu yetu ilete baraka kwetu sisi wana wako haki yako iwe ni nguvu yetu uwe faraja yetu hata kwa machungu upendo na amani tujazie ndugu uzidi uhasama na kisasi mwana majirani tunapigana tufunze upendo tukakumbatiane e mungu wewe ni nguvu yetu ilete baraka kwetu sisi wana wako haki yako iwe ni nguvu yetu uwe faraja yetu hata kwa machungu upendo na amani tujazie ndugu uzidi uhasama na kisasi mwana majirani tunapigana tufunze upendo tukakumbatiane upendo uvumilia haujivuni haukose kuwa na adabu hautafuti mambo yake kabwe Ni wake bwana kama ilivyo zamani 
Mwa vizuri, mjeo na umetameta 